So we have been documenting this roof raise. It's a 14-inch roof raise, and throughout this process, even though it's not our first by far, I've still made a couple mistakes or done things I didn't need to do. But what about this door? I raised the bus 14 inches, and the door we made shorter. Why would I do that? I'm going to tell you that's what we're doing today. One nice thing about having a front-engine bus with a rear emergency door is that if you make this your bed in here then below the bed you've got good storage you can put a kayak under your bed all kinds of stuff so that becomes sort of the garage it's a pretty common design and that's what the owners of this bus want to do so i did the roof raise but i shortened the door and the reason i did that was because oh sorry it's a little tall now because i raised the roof this is going to be what they call it, a barn door. So this way, the top door will overlap the bottom, which will be hinged over here with a piano hinge. And at night, when they're in bed, they can open up the top door and have air or whatever view and still leave the bottom secure and close so that people or critters aren't climbing in there. Uh, Pretty cool design. We're doing that. I will finish up the bottom. But anyway, in today's video, I just wanted to show you how I shortened the door and made this change. The first step is figuring out where I want the cuts to occur and then taking out the glass. So I'm going to cut here and here. So I've got to remove that lower pane of glass. So the first thing there is to pull out the locking strip using a pick grab that and pull it out all the way around. It comes out pretty easily usually. This plate is just super cool. I love the patina on it and they'll use it inside the bus somewhere else. Now I'm getting under this rubber molding with a pry bar. Got to work your way around. It's a little tough to do one-handed here. So just get under that pry it around from the same side as the locking strip. There's enough flex that it should pop inward and allow you to push the glass down. And by using a couple of those pry bars, I can just work my way around the edge just like this. Keep going. Be gentle. Now, I'm not going to reuse this glass, so if I busted it, it's no big deal except making a mess. But I wanted to get it out intact just so I didn't make a mess. Now that the glass is free, I can pull it out of place and remove this hinge over here by grinding off and punching out the rivet. I've marked my cuts on both sides. And I'm going to use a zip disc to cut these instead of the plasma cutter. Before I do that, I want to pull off the rubber gasket just to get it out of the way so I can use that later. And again, I could have used the plasma cutter, but I want a really clean cut on this. So I'm using the zip disc just in an angle grinder. Work my way around it. There are four cuts total. Pretty simple. I've got this cut off at the bottom and it leaves a pretty clean edge. Now I've just got one more cut to make up here. And then I'm ready to clamp everything together. I've got some lengths of aluminum square tube there, which are really straight, but they also will absorb some heat when I'm doing the welding. I'm just under 47 inches on this side. So doing my one-handed tape measure technique, I measure this side and they're not quite the same. I've got to shorten this side a little over an eighth of an inch. I've made the adjustment and they are even, so now I've moved this over to the plasma cutting pod and I have chamfered these edges so that when I weld this, I can get a good bond and some good structure in there. I've done my first weld. I've got a little bit of filling to do now that I've ground this off, but it's looking pretty good. You can see the general shape. On the outside now, I've got a fill over here. I'm doing little spot welds 
and that's I find the best way to weld this thin material. Once I grind it down, it looks pretty good. I think the customers will be pleased with that. I did a little reinforcement inside that. It's still windy, but not as bad as it was, so maybe I can stop doing voiceover. So anyway, here is what that will look like. I glued the trim molding strip back in. I don't know if I'm using the same molding down here or not because this is where it will overlap the other door. So I might put something in that's a little bit flatter. We'll see. That's why I didn't glue that in there yet. So these I think will look pretty good. I did build up a bit of weld, especially down, get my finger out of the way, down in here in the bottom on each side. I just built that up so it's basically a reinforced piece. I'm going to leave the inside of this bare for them in case they want to, they might want to, you know, make this a little like book or magazine pocket in their door. I'll put a piece of steel and rivet it on the outside so it looks nice. But on the inside, I don't know what they're going to want to do. They could do something like this. This will be near their bed, sort of at the headboard, I think, of the bed. And it would be a good place to store cell phones or little knickknacks or something that you want to get to, flashlights. So I've done this uh, several times, but I didn't. In short, I made a mistake. I did something I didn't have to do. I have said a few times that I learned something new on every one of these or I make a mistake. I didn't need to take this out and take these rivets out because the hinge is in the part of the door that is still going back. So anyway, extra work, but it's all part of the process. This gives you a better idea of what I am doing here. And right now I've got one, whoop, can't see. This gives you a better idea of what I'm doing here. Right now I've got one hinge on the outside bolted in. Another one down here is not yet bolted in. Once I know where that goes, I will weld in a, a steel plate down here so that hinge goes into the frame. I just wanted to clamp it in place and make sure that the, make sure my gaps were even. It looks good, so I will make a new latch down here make a new latch box. Uh, it had the old one that was pretty bulky and had a switch in it, which we don't need. So I will make a smaller latch plate down here or catch, whatever that is anyway. And then I'll put that other hinge in and then make the door for the bottom, which gets trapped into place and will keep their garage secure. This way they can open up the top door while they are sleeping back here in the bed. And if they, like I said, if they want to make this into a little cubby, uh, someplace to put flashlights and, you know, phones or things you might want, books, anything you might want in the evening or in the morning. And then uh, down here, that way they can open that door while they're in bed and this door down here can stay secure and keep their stuff just protected. And yes, another part where I am undoing something I did, but it really just makes more sense, uh, really sort of in a production I guess uh, system just to put these rivets in I didn't know exactly where these would end up not being needed so now I can just drill these out the famous positioning wedges that appeared in an earlier video have returned for a supporting role just uh, I had to pry this out a little bit so that I can get the hinge out since it's sitting here and the weights on it and it's clamped over there I want this hinge to sit flat so that means bringing the door out a little bit and now I can drill through here and put in some rivets and at least uh, anchor that temporarily. Like I've shown, and at least it's my preference, this hole I have drilled out to proper size. These two are still a little undersized. That way I can make sure when I snug this up that it won't cause any alignment issues with the other holes. I will drill those after I get this one tight, which I'll do off camera. I've got one rivet. That's a slightly different rivet uh, from these because this one is a more structural rivet, if that makes sense. It's got a thicker shank on it inside. When they go, they go.
I'm going to close out this part of the video. It's a little loose because on the inside, I still need to put in that plate. And part of that means a spacer between the door jam and the bolt there. But that's easy. I'll do that. I've put the plate inside, so now I've just got to drill these holes and put in bolts put rivets up in those three holes where I took the existing rivets out. And then there's the top door. The bottom door will be a separate thing. That's super easy, really just a rectangle. Well, our friends, the Clecos from an earlier episode also came back for a cameo appearance. So I've got Clecos in here. And then there will be rivets. I changed my mind. I'm allowed to do that. No, I just thought this looked kind of cool. The little recess in there adds some detail. So instead of like putting just boring skin over this, I recessed a panel in there, riveted it in, and then sealed it, of course. And on the outside, that's a die core, um, a gray die core. It skins over quickly. I think it looks sharp. Hopefully they'll like it. For the latch in here, I'm going to put a piece of eighth inch steel plate just to pull that up tight. And then I'm going to cut a piece of square tube. Just basically, I'm just using it for the bends. It's in good shape and weld it to the plate and that'll make a nice solid deadbolt latch strike plate thing. One of the best tools I ever bought was this Milwaukee portable bandsaw. So I just zipped this off and then I'll measure out a piece of plate. I might have to trim this a bit. I want it a bit snug, but that should be good. So the door latch is done and that holds up tightly. So now I just make the little bottom panel with a piano hinge, uh, piano, where there, make a little bottom panel with a piano hinge. 